Good day, internet people. Hello. There we go. Hello. Um, it's my deck profile for Angel Feather. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so this is the um, Stride, basically, build. Um, I did build the Metatron deck. I didn't deck profile it. To be honest, it wasn't working for me. Um, I played with it quite a few times, and I just never got the right kind of ride off and it just wasn't happening for me so I thought I'd build this Gavrail deck. Not for you Jen. Exactly. Uh, I, I built this Gavrail deck which you'll probably have seen in a couple of really long games in the last couple of uh, days or weeks and yeah uh, I thought you know someone said can you deck profile it? I got the last couple of cards for it today so without further ado I'll get into it. So the starter is a new one called Black Cattle Azrael. She's really good. Basically, it lets you damage check a card and then put a card from your damage zone into your hand. That's a really nice skill. If there's something in there that you already want, then you can use that to get hold of something, or you can just do it anyway. See what turns up, and then if it's something good, it goes into your hand. Pretty uh, basic, but a very powerful skill. So that's the starter. Now we'll get onto the trigger lineup. So, to start off with, I run in a stunning turn of events, 8 crit. Uh, basically, because you want to hit hard, and it's just, it's the done thing, isn't it? 8 crit, let's face it. It's the done thing. I went for these ones mainly because I think they're the cutest crits. Um, this card here. Obviously, Critical Hit Angel can go into the soul to give something plus three. For the most part, you're not going to want to do that unless you somehow really desperately want soul. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case in this particular deck. Um, and then I run for Draw Triggers. This is the one that can counter blast itself in the damage zone to give your Vanguard plus three. Uh, if you're planning on cycling cards from your damage zone back into your deck anyway, regardless of whether they're the right way up or not, this might be just an easy kind of plus three before you do a switch. So that often kind of negates itself, so it doesn't really essentially cost anything. Um, and then the real MVP is the heel trigger Sunny Smile Angel. Uh, she's been around all the way back since BTO6. That's the... Uh, oh, what was that one called? I can't even remember. It's the one where Gold Paladins and Angel Feather and all that were introduced anyway. Um, so basically... When, yeah, that's one. Breaker yeah. of Limits. That's the one it's called. Breaker of Limits. I knew it was something like that. Right. Yeah, so she's a lot... Well, she's basically the same as the Oracle Think Tank one, which I think might be Lozenge Magus. Um where she can boost for 6k and at the end of the turn that she boosted you put her back into the deck and shuffle your deck so you know she's pretty amazing because she just keeps going back to the deck it opens up the opportunity to heal a lot more and if she is damage checked you, in this deck you can uniquely bring her from the damage zone to a rear guard boost again with it and it's back in the deck so unless it gets dropped um, into your drop zone for whatever reason you can just keep cycling these and cycling these and cycling these and your opponent won't like you right grade ones this is kind of like a no-brainer I run 4000 Ray Pegasus um, a classic angel feather card again going back to BT6 um, what this one does is it basically gets plus 2000 power every time something goes into the damage zone so that means that if you uh, if you do one damage switch, this is a 9k booster. If you do two, it's 11k. If you do five, it's got plus 10. It's a 17k booster. So that can very quickly get absolutely mental. This is a, kind of like a classic Angel Feather non-celestial power play. And I've always kind of built my Angel Feather decks around doing this kind of skill. Uh, I was never keen on the Celestial builds, but the classic building up power ones, great. Right, I run two uh, Battle Cupid No CL. 
uh, one of the few triple rare grade ones from Vanguard's history. Uh, basically, when you use her to guard, when she goes into the guardian circle, you can damage switch a card from your hand with a card in the damage zone. It doesn't have to be a face-up card either. So you can use this to fix a counter blast, and this can obviously boost cards that benefit from having cards switched into the damage zone, um, even the grade 3s, which is really nice. I only run that at 2 because the grade 1 lineup is pretty tight in this deck. Um, I run 4 of the Stride Fodder, Black Call Nakir. Not much to say about this, it searches out um, the main grade 3 Gavrail from the deck if you need to get it. Other than that, it makes you basically guarantee your strides when you've got these in hand. And we've got four of the new Perfect Guard. Um, you don't really need the unflipping skill with this because there are ways to unflip with the deck as it is. Um, but it doesn't hurt either. So, yeah, you can't guard a rear guard, but you generally won't have any problems with this deck filling your rear guard back up. Right, grade twos. I run. One, two, three of this one. This is Love Machine Gun No CL. So it's the grade two No CL. Um, it's basically dead simple. You place it on the field and you can damage switch one card from your hand and one card in the damage zone. So again, it combos with your Pegasus or it just lets you build up your rear guard um, and your hand and boost your numbers basically, so you can't go wrong with her. I run three of the million ray Pegasus, uh, grade two equivalent of the grade one Pegasus plus two when something goes into the damage zone. And I run four of this new card here, which is Nurse of Broken Heart. Uh, she's a lot like the Pegasus, but better as long as you're on Generation Break. Uh, basically, when you take a damage, she gives herself and your vanguard plus two. So if you have a vanguard there on GB, and you've got this, this there and there, you take a damage, that gets plus two, that gets plus two, that gets plus four, essentially. So that could be a pretty mental play. And if you take a crit, your vanguard's getting plus eight, even assuming no triggers. So, yeah, she's pretty awesome. And my grade 2 lineup is then filled out with two of the when it's boosted card for the deck. Um, quite simple. Basically, you can't blast one when it's boosted. Look at two cards on top of the deck. Search for one among them, put it into your damage zone face up, put the rest on the bottom of the deck. Choose a face up card from your damage zone and call it to the rear guard. So it lets you get an extra attack out. Uh, lets you boost units again that kind of benefit from the switch. Great little card. But generally, you'll want the Pegasus is on the field. To benefit from such a skill. Um, and yeah, onto the grade 3 lineup. This is my support grade 3. There's probably better choices. Um, a lot of people are running Calamity Flame, which is a 10k, which it has the same skill as the Pegasus basically. What this one does is basically when it hits a Vanguard, you can counter blast one. Look at the three cards on the top of the deck, search for a card from among them, put it into the damage zone face up, put the rest on the bottom of the deck in any order, choose a face up card from your damage zone and call it to the rear guard. So, yeah, gets you extra attacks out, boosts units, same thing, it's all the same kind of deal basically. Uh, the deck's kind of a, a mono purpose deck really, and everything's geared towards this one particular skill. Um, which leads me to the main grade 3, which is Black Shiver Gar uh, Gavriel. Um, yeah, so she's got a Generation Break 2 unit uh, skill, which is amazing. Basically, when a card is put into the damage zone until the end of the turn, this unit gets... All the units in the front row get plus 2,000. So, yeah, that's pretty cool, and it stacks. So, you take a crit, your entire front row is on plus 4,000, which is awesome. And her other skill is when you stride upon her, you can't blast one. Look at the top three cards of the deck, put one of them into the damage zone... Choose a card from the damage zone, call it to rear guard, and give it plus two. So it fills the field out for basically just a counter blast. You get an extra unit on the field. You boost units which benefit from putting the damage switch in. And it's amazing. And it combos really nicely with some of the other cards, as you will no doubt understand. Right, that's the main deck. Strides. 
uh, thanks to the suggestion of a viewer, I put a blizzard in. I got hold of one. This is the promo one from the Team League. So I run this one basically to get if I want to get to GB2 nice and early, which gives you that highly defensive deck. Next up, at the moment I've got one of these. I don't know whether I'll make it two. Basically, he has the ability when he's placed, he can Soul Blast two. You basically put all your damage back into the deck and then take the same amount of damage. This is great because what it can do is if you've used all your Counter Blast, he can basically uncounter blast everything, essentially. And if you've got five damage and you've got some Pegasuses on the field, when this skill comes off, each of those Pegasuses gets plus 10,000, which is pretty nuts. Um, being a Soul Blast 2, unless you're going to be Soul Charging, he's kind of a one-shot deal. But it's a great card. I think if you ran an Angel Feather deck which did a lot more Soul Charging, he could be a real, real MVP. Um, I won't go onto the main stride there. I'll just go with this one first. This is... One from Fighters Collection, Holy Seraph Uriel. Um, her skill is basically the same as the on stride skill for for Garvale. Um, basically, when you actually does it hit? Yes, it has to hit a Vanguard. Look at three cards on top of the deck. Search for one of them. Put it in face up into damage zone. Da -da 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 -da. You can call one grid two or less card from your damage zone. Call it to the rear guard, and that unit gets plus two. So it's just that grid two or less restriction that makes her a little bit. Mm, but then you're probably going to be dropping your grade 3s for stride or whatever anyway. So it's not the end of the world. But she's a great little card really. Um, yeah, I like her. And then the expensive card from the deck is this one. Holy Seraph Raphael. You probably know what this does. It's really dead simple. You just When she's on the Vanguard Circle, you can Persona Flip her from the G-Zone and you heal her damage. And that's it. Um... It's a nice skill. It's great to be able to heal at a whim as you feel like it. The only downside is, apart from the on stride skill, she hasn't got any other stuff to really make your rear guard attacks big. So she's going to be swinging basically for your general basic, like 26, probably what, with a boost 33 or something. Um, and your rear guards, you're not going to get massive numbers on a turn that you play her down. As a rule, you can use your NoCLs and stuff to kind of give it a bit of a boost. But I find that she's best saved for maybe a late game situation when it's gone on a little bit longer than you think. You just want to heal the damage and then have a turn, get through the next turn and wallop them down with a card like this. Or use him, because he is actually a really good game ender. Um, but yeah, there's kind of like... There's plenty of options. I'm still... I like this card, but I feel like being a Persona Flip, it takes up half of your strides, and it's not hurting the opponent that much. I know going one card better in your, heat, in your damage zone is pretty big, but I don't know. Maybe it's me. It probably is me. Anyway, that's the deck. That's where it currently is at. Um, I'm not going to rule out changes. Um, I'd like to hear what you think of this deck. Um, obviously, I'm running quite a lot of cards from the pre-G era in here. What that basically does uh, for stuff like NoCL and the Pegasus is, is it lets you do some power boost early. It lets you kind of field fix and hand fix early. And it's just, I find that really useful. I don't like the idea of a deck that only functions after Generation Break has become active and these cards, they just work really well. However, like I say, post down below with any suggestions or ideas, um, if you've got any questions. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye.